Hello and welcome to the first in a series of beginner color correction tutorials. I'm Brian Mansi, and in this video we'll be looking at understanding Luma and Luma adjustments, as well as an introduction to additive color. To start you off, we'll be looking at white and black points. For the majority of these tutorials, I'll be using an After Effects plugin called Color Finesse. This plugin ships with any legitimate copy of After Effects. The Luma channel is the channel which tells us what areas of the video are light and dark. This can be viewed in the waveform monitor. A value of 0 being pure black and a value of 100 being pure white. Any values above or below this are clipped during the export. Some codecs such as ABC HD or raw footage from the C300 or RED store values up to 110 or super white. This means that certain clipped information can be brought back before the final export. For more information on making Luma adjustments and more specifically how to color correct under exposed shots, check out the links to my written tutorials in the description. One of the most common methods of making Luma adjustments are the lift, gamma and gain controls. Lift can also be called pedestal as seen here. Pedestal affects the shadows. Gamma adjusts the midtones, whilst gain adjusts the highlights. The shadows make up approximately one third of the bottom segment, the midtones being the central third, and the highlights being the upper third, though this can vary greatly depending on the program you're using. Notice that when using the master controls, these adjustments heavily affect the Luma channel as a whole. More professional programs, such as DaVinci Resolve, work similarly to performing gamma adjustments to the specific tonal range. This method of Luma adjustment means that the other ranges will only slightly be affected. This is because a gamma adjustment commonly affects the areas within a white and black point, leaving them relatively untouched. Similarly to a levels adjustment in Photoshop, these adjustments do still overlap. This is to prevent the adjustment from looking harsh and unrealistic. The way that the tonal range is defined also varies greatly on the program. In Color Finesse, it is defined by an adjustable graph, in a way similar to many color grading programs. Here we have a clip with a high contrast ratio, with areas reaching into the low shadows and some areas where the highlights clip. The shadows are represented by the black areas of the clip, the midtones by grey and the highlights by light grey. So as we can see, the default tonal range works well for the most part, showing highlights on the girl's hair and the rider's face, while showing shadows on the hedge, the girl's tights and the rider's shirt. But when you have a considerably underexposed or low contrast image, you will probably need to adjust the tonal range. The reason why you want a fair amount of shadows and highlights is so that the color wheel adjustments you make will affect each range without bleeding too much into the others where it may be unwanted. The way you adjust it is, again, dependent on the tools you are using. In Color Finesse it is adjusted by dragging these points, whereas in Premiere it is adjusted via a slider. Here we have a fair amount of highlights and shadow coverage whilst maintaining a large amount of midtones. It's best to leave the highlights and shadows covering areas that realistically look like highlights and shadows to you. In the majority of color grading programs, color is made through an additive process in a way similar but distinctly different to mixing paint. You must add values of red, green or blue to create the colors you are looking for. As we can see via the RGB scopes, at around 60 to 100 on the right side of the image, blue is extremely dominant, maintaining very bright values and mixing mostly with the other channels in the shadows, giving us a blue wash. Now the only channel present is blue. As we increase the amount in the green channel, watch what happens to the overall image. We get cyan in the areas that the channels overlap, in particular the overblown light at the bottom left of the image, as blue plus green equals cyan. When we replace green with red, we get purple. You can work out what each color creates when mixed with another by looking at the color wheels. 
We can see the color in between green and blue is cyan, whilst the color in between blue and red is purple. That's all for now. I will cover luma adjustments and color wheels in more detail, alongside secondary color correction in the next tutorial. To make sure you stay updated, don't forget to subscribe.